So today's video is going to be a little bit different than what you guys have come to expect. But we are trying to do some new things this year on the Hus channel. We're trying to show more of not only our, our lives hunting and fishing, but more of our lives when we're not so necessarily hunting or fishing. But this video is a question that we have been asked a lot, and so I figured I'd do a review real quick and answer this question. We've done it a few times, but people still want to know what camera equipment do we use to film our our adventures on. So I thought I'd show you real quick uh, the different cameras we use, uh, the reasons why we use them, and uh, you know every camera has it's a little bit of a different purpose. So I thought I'd just run through what we use and uh, show you guys what we're doing. So I'm going to show you guys what we use and tell you why we use them, but at the same time don't expect some real in-depth uh, technology talk because I'm not that guy for you, but I will show you uh, the cameras we use, I will tell you the, the um, brands, the models, and if you really want to dive in and uh, look up the specs, uh, you can always Google it. By far, hands down, this is our go-to camera. This is a Canon G7X. It is what we call the vlog camera. So anytime you're, we're vlogging, 99% of the time we're using this thing. So as you can see, uh, it's handheld. See, see, I'm holding it with my hand. But it's handheld. I'm du double vlogging here, by the way. That's pretty impressive. So it does have this flip up lens, right? And why I said it's nice, but maybe it's not so nice, because when you st first start vlogging uh, and you have this flipped up so you can see how handsome you're looking, instead of looking into the lens, instead of looking at the people at home, you're looking at yourself and it kind of shows, it's kind of a, a weird video when, it, when you're just staring at yourself on the viewfinder. but. Uh, you get over that. It is nice though to see um, how everything's looking. So we add just this little dead rabbit. We make these. We actually cut this. I cut this off this other dead rabbit. This is to help with the wind, right? So this is when it's super windy and you have this on, it will cut down on the wind and it won't just like totally redline your audio when you're trying to edit it. Great thing about this camera is I can throw it in the front of my pocket while we're fishing and uh, if you know somebody catches a fish real quick I can get it out in no time like two seconds flat. So this is our go-to camera. This is a great camera. If you're looking at starting a, a YouTube channel, a vlog channel, this is the camera I would recommend getting. So this bad boy here is actually what I'm filming with right now. This has the bigger lens on it. This is a, I think a 250 millimeter lens. Uh, the camera I'm shooting on is only a 50 millimeter lens, 55 millimeter lens. As you can see right there, this is a, uh, a DSLR as they call it. And if I remember right, that means digital single lens reflex camera. Did I nail that guys? I have no idea what that means. I just know this is a sweet camera. This is a kind of a, this is kind of a step above the, uh, the vlog camera we use. You can do the same thing like I'm doing now. Um, but this captures some really good B-roll footage. We use this a lot for B-roll. Up close shots, if you're trying to rack focus off one subject to another one, you know, this is all a manual zoom you can do here. You can switch it over to manual uh, focus or automatic focus. It's a uh, replaceable or a interchangeable lens camera. So you can get, like I told you, get bigger, cam bigger lenses, smaller lenses, wide lenses, whatever you're looking to do. Plus, I love the DSLR because it is a camera that you can switch back and forth with. You can film some really good um, video, but then you can just switch it over and take some awesome, awesome um, photographs with it as well. Uh, I would recommend getting an external mic like we have on this one. Uh, audio is always a big thing, so um, anytime you can upgrade your audio like this, I would say this camera, um, I've been using one for about two or three years, I still have not even scratched the surface of it of what it can do. I know uh, what it what I can do with it and it's helped out with, uh, with a lot of the videos. Same with Eric and Brian, they both have one and run it a lot. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna tell you though, if you're looking to do a YouTube video, it's great, you don't need to invest the money in something like that unless you're really looking to upgrade some of your B-roll stuff um, or just your everyday vlogging stuff, I guess. So this is a Canon XA30. As I'm filming this, I'm realizing like, I'm not even in focus all the way sometimes. So, um, guys, we are no professionals at filming. We just do it a lot and we try to get better. But anyway, this is a Canon XA30. It's a great um, run and gun type camera. I would say we've got uh, the external mic for it that goes on top of the housing, which is not even on there right now. I took it off. But this is a great camera because you can do anything with it. You can vlog with it. You can shoot another subject with it. If Brian's hunting or Eric's hunting, I can shoot them with it. Plus, if you put it down on a tripod, 
like this, you can actually zoom in and capture some really good kill shots with it. It's 20x optical zoom, so it's not like amazing, but it is good. We've captured a lot of good kill shots, archery hunts, obviously, two 300 yard shots. Uh, that camera is perfect for it. Um, super easy to use. I like this camera because I can just grab it and uh, not worry what all the settings are and, and run out and use it. Uh, it's been a good camera. This is an XA30. Uh, we've also used uh, the XA20. We have both. Um, it's been a good camera for, for us. So this bad boy right here, we bought this thing two years ago. This is the DGI Osmo. It's like a uh, balancing camera, like uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? You can run with this camera and you're gonna get a steady shot because of this gimbal here. And uh, it's, this is a rad little unit. I can tell you we've used it a lot for B-roll footage as well. I'll tell you the things we don't like about it. So you have to put your cell phone on it. You have to download an app. Um, and it's just kind of a pain in the butt. The way to make this camera better is just to put a GoPro on here instead of this other camera that you have to hook your phone up to. You have to have memory on your phone, obviously. So we quit using this. I don't have it, but we switched to the new uh, GoPro gimbal they have out. I don't even know what it's called. It works a lot better um, just for storing files and the footage, and you don't have to hook anything up to it. You can use it anytime without having Wi-Fi. So this thing, I think, is a little outdated. Uh, but it, it did serve its purpose, purpose for a year. All right, so the next uh, camera we have here, obviously everyone uses them, it seems like. I have never been like over the top impressed with GoPro. Um, once again, I should actually like learn like the different settings and how to make things look great. I've seen other people's GoPro footage and some of it is amazing and I'm like, how do they capture it? I've heard a lot of it is in the editing that you do, but these work great. They serve it their purpose. I mean, um, you know, fishing, a lot of guys do the old uh, chesty mount, and so they're fishing, talking. They have an external mic on theirs. You can fish by yourself, and, uh, you know, it captures a lot of the action of hooking a fish, you know, maybe a, an eat on the, a dry fly or something. You can set these up and do time lapses with them. We're going, we're getting ready to go on a trip to Oregon to go steelhead fishing. We like to attach these to the boat to kind of capture most of the day. If you have a bunch of different batteries with you to replace the batteries, you can pretty much run it all day, capture some great stuff. Um, that's the, the GoPro 5. I believe this is an old school one, the GoPro Hero 4. We have used them a lot in the past and they serve their purpose. I just need to learn how to use them a little bit better. That brings me onto this bad boy. This is a Canon G1X inside of an underwater housing. This thing looks pretty legit, pretty rad. Like you show up to fish and you have this, people think, oh man, these guys are like professional videographers, right? Not necessarily true. Camera is, I, I don't think it's any better than the G7X, to be honest. It's big, it's bulky. Uh, somebody told me it shot really good slow-mo and that was the reason why we kind of went with it and bought it. Um, but we can only get 30 frames per second on it for whatever reason. Um, and uh, then we bought this housing for it and it, it does capture really good underwater stuff. But at the same time, I mean, you can take this camera and get some really good underwater stuff. And I mean, this compared to this is kind of nonsense, but we packed it around just so we can justify us purchasing it. I can't remember the price of any of this stuff. Um, this housing wasn't too much. It was like 200 bucks. This camera might've been 500 bucks. So we're 700 bucks into it. We're gonna get our money's worth out of it. Here's another problem with it is the underwater stuff is it's not attached to a selfie stick like a GoPro is a lot of the time. So if you want to capture the underwater stuff, your hands are underneath the water as well. And usually it's freezing in March down in uh, central Oregon. So your hands freeze as well. So last but not least, uh, this is something we use all the time. This is our phone scope. Um, it's just an attachment that is made that uh, fits your phone. This is my iPhone 7, so I put my phone directly in it. So this piece is the piece that fits my Vortex Razor HD spotting scope. So they make these in all different sizes, so you can match your phone up, and then you can match your spotting scope up, or you can put them on binoculars, whatever you want. But for us, this is the best way we have found to shoot long range um, video. If we're scouting deer, scouting elk, and they're 1,200, 1,500 yards away, your freaking phone becomes one of the most legitimate 
um, long lensed camera there is out there. So phone scope, we use these guys all the time. This is our go-to for rifle hunts and things like that. But uh, it's um, definitely uh, something that's helped us film. So that's just a real quick rundown of the equipment we use, uh, the cameras we use. We get asked that question a lot. And I guess uh, my question back to you um, for the people that have been asking is, what is the purpose for uh, you wanting to know is it something that you, you guys are wanting to do are you wanting to start a YouTube channel or you want to start a blog you just want to take better pictures for Instagram what 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 are you guys looking to do because in all honesty I can tell you if you're looking to start uh, capturing content is just use what you have if you don't have money to go and invest in a new camera don't buy any of these cameras use whatever you can and I would say 90% of the people watching probably have one of these a phone of some sort, an iPhone or a LG or whatever they are. Learn to use this if you can't afford to go out and purchase a camera. These things, these little devices, these little computers that are in our pocket 100% of the time are taking over things like this, in all honesty. But if you do have a little bit of money to invest and you wanna do something besides your phone, uh, go out and buy you a little handheld. This is the, the G7X by Canon. Sony makes some great ones. There's a lot of good cameras out there on the market. Do some, some research, but um, you know, this is a great camera to start out with. And my biggest thing would be um, whatever camera you have, if it's your phone or you're investing some money in, into a camera, is you have to learn how to be on camera. That's a big part of creating content, especially sharing it with other people, is it doesn't matter what camera you have or how well you know that camera. If you don't know how to conduct yourself in front of a camera, and maybe I do a terrible job, I don't know, but if you don't, if you're not uh, used to that, it's going to be a little overwhelming at first. If you put a camera on yourself for the first time and try to vlog, it can be a little nerve wracking. So whatever you decide to do, just learn to be yourself on camera. I think that's number one if you if you're looking to create content for the internet or for whatever purpose. Last thing I want to say, and I'll leave this with you, is if there was no internet, if there was no YouTube, if there was no online social media. Um, one of the coolest things for me is looking back on pictures of my dad when he was a kid hunting and fishing with his family. I think those are like some of the most cherished pictures I have. And so if there was none of this social media stuff and there was no way to become, you know, insta famous or make money on, on the internet, I think it is just cool to be able to one day show your kids, your grandkids, maybe your great grandkids, some of the experiences and the adventures that you went on. Um, number one, I think that's the most important reason of why anybody should film is just to capture those memories. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know it's a little bit different. Maybe a lot of you guys don't really care about the camera equipment. We've just seen that question a lot, so I thought I would uh, answer some of those questions and kind of show you what we, what we use. But uh, thanks for watching, guys. Please subscribe if you haven't, and uh, go check out some of our other videos and see where we use these cameras, okay? Mm -hmm.